Hello and welcome to a Photoshop episode of Apple A Day. Today I'm demonstrating the new Photoshop Generative Fill feature and just how amazing and useful it is. Up until recently, I didn't have much need for it. I was using Photoshop or mostly Affinity Photo uh, for skin retouching for my photography work. But since I've started working on another channel about movie trivia, hot butter trivia, this Generative Fill feature has saved me hours and hours of time. Uh, let me show you what I mean. As you can see, I have opened the Army of Darkness movie poster in Photoshop. Now, uh, one of the trivia questions we have in the Hot Butter Trivia video is you have to guess the name of the movie with that name removed from the movie poster. Obviously, if the title of the movie is on a solid uh, color background, then this is really easy. But for a poster like this, where there's an illustration or complex background behind the text, this can be a daunting task to fill in manually. But watch how easy this task has become using the Generative Fill feature. Let me just blow this up a little bit. Press the Z key for the magnifying glass. There we go. And M for Marquee. So I'm just going to surround the text using the Rectangular Marquee tool, just like that. And simply click on Generative Fill. And I don't have to type anything into this text field. It's optional. And I will just press Generate. That took about uh, 20 to 30 seconds. I sped it up. But check this out. Look at how it filled in this illustration. Here's the original. And that entire area was replaced with this. To me, that is incredibly impressive. It would have taken so long to do this manually. A massive time saver. This doesn't need any additional changes or retouching. Let's try another one, one with more geometric shapes in it. This predestination poster has a lot of lines and circles. So let's see how well the generative fill works here. I'm gonna select this area, do the same thing, click on generative fill and press generate. This is so impressive. The lines and the curves are redrawn to match those in the surrounding area. Let me show you the original. There it is there. I mean, that just blows my mind. It would have taken so long to do this manually. It's perfectly seamless. Okay, let's do one last one. The movie Edge of Tomorrow. This also has a background behind the text. And sometimes if your selection is too close to the text, let me just zoom in. Sometimes if your selection is too close to the nearby text, it can mess up the fill. So I'm going to select this area here, including those horizontal lines. And you can see my marquee or my selection is fairly close to the text above and below. So I'm going to press generate or fill again and press generate. So yeah, that's not good at all. I did this previously and it didn't look as bad as this version did. It had snippets of the text like the bottom parts of the actors' names and the top parts of the, you know, text underneath. And it was kind of all garbled in with the background. This is a little bit different. It almost looks like static. So let's undo that. And let's try this again. I'm not going to go near that text this time. I'm going to tighten up my selection by just choosing the edge of tomorrow text between those horizontal lines. And hopefully that will work a little bit better. Ah, there we go. Much, much better. It's amazing to me how it filled in the leg and the boot and the water. I mean, at a glance, looking at that at normal size, you can't tell. So in the time that it took me to produce this Apple a Day episode, I just created three posters for Hot Butter Trivia. Anyone who's had to fill in a background using a variety of tools, whether it be in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, and make it look good and not muddied or too soft from overusing the clone stamp tool, you know, they can certainly appreciate this. Obviously, this would come in handy for removing anything from any background. So I'll conclude that I'm going to be using Photoshop a lot more simply because of this one feature. It's just amazing. Thanks so much for watching. I'm John Martins. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple a Day.